You did it, you finished your edit, and now you're ready to share your project, whether that be to family and friends, social media, different clients. So let's hop into Final Cut Pro and learn about the different sharing options that are available to you. Sharing your finished Final Cut videos and projects with others has never been easier. Sharing allows you to take your finished work and bake it down into a contained movie that is optimized for the destination and format that you choose. In this video, we'll become familiar with how to share our entire project or parts of it, still frames, multiple clips, as well as the ability to export to several destinations at once. Now, I already have a project that's open in my timeline that I'd like to have a master file of. This refers to a movie of high quality intended to be played back on your computer. Computer. To do this, let's go to the Final Cut Pro file menu and under share, I'll choose export file and notice that there's a shortcut for command E. Inside the dialog box, I'm currently in the info tab and we can see a thumbnail of our video. We are able to skim over this thumbnail. <laughs> where we'll hear both audio and video skimming. On the bottom left of the project gives us details about how we'll be exporting, the frame rate, frame size, as well as our audio settings and the length. To the bottom right is the type of file and estimated file size, although in certain cases its accuracy might not be the greatest. All of this is based on properties in the settings tab. If I head there, we can choose from several formats, including to only have our video or audio only, as well as different publishing destinations and an MXF format for broadcast. We can also choose from a variety of video codecs. Now there are several Apple ProRes ones to choose from. Apple publishes a white paper that goes into great detail about this. Now to provide a bit more info, if I was looking to export video with an alpha channel, such as text and motion graphics, I can choose one of the Apple ProRes 4444 options. The first three numbers of the ProRes codec refers to RGB and what is commonly known as chroma sampling. This can be particularly important for color and VFX workflows. Now when you see a fourth number, it means that this has an alpha channel. Since I'm not interested in that, I will choose Apple ProRes 422. And you'll notice that at the very bottom, that once the export is finished, an action will be triggered opening up this file in QuickTime Player. We could choose to open it in a different applications such as compressor or even on our home videos. The last tab refers to roles. If you've defined certain assets in your timeline with roles, Final Cut can isolate these on export and only export those role of assets. For instance, this can be beneficial in audio workflows where you may just want to export the dialogue for one of the main characters in the film. Apple has a white paper on these audio role workflows as well as information about working with roles in more detail. Okay. Let's head back to the Info tab, and on the bottom right-hand corner, I'm going to click Next. Here is where we can choose where we're going to save our movie. On the desktop, I'll create a new folder, which I'll call My Exports. I'll click Create, followed by Save on the bottom right-hand corner. Now, if we go to our Background Task Manager, we can see this video being exported in the background. Note, if you start to make changes to your timeline in Final Cut, it will not affect the export, but that the process of sharing will be paused until some moments of inactivity, which is set in your preferences. You can see right now that QuickTime Player has opened on my system and I'll press Command F to make it full frame where I can start to play back this project. I'll press the spacebar to stop and head back into Final Cut Pro. I'll now close the background task manager. Besides projects, Final Cut also allows you to share clips. I want to click on my browser on the top right hand corner where I happen to be in a Two Sisters keyword collection. If I move over these shots, I can see that I have made some in and out point decisions. Let's select a few of these to share. I will select this one, command click the second one and the third and fourth. So everything from the second row. With those selected, I'll head to the file menu, noticing that four clips are about to be shared, and let's choose the YouTube and Facebook format. On the left-hand side, I can see those clips that I'm about to share. There's an icon at the bottom left showing that I am just sharing what's in the range. If I head to the settings tab, we can choose from a variety of resolutions. I'll choose 640 by 360. And once I click next, inside my My Exports folder, I'll create a new folder called Batched Clips. Once I choose Create and press Share, the Background Task Manager gets to work and begins to export each of those clips. 
We can see here that I've successfully batched those four clips that I selected here. Press the space bar, I'm able to preview them one by one by pressing that downward arrow button. Now let's head back into Final Cut. It just so happens that I have an actual project that I would like to create a thumbnail of one of the frames and export a master file as well as one that's ready for the web. In order to accomplish this, I'll head up to my export library where I'll double click the project to open it. And then from the file menu, I'm gonna go to the share menu again but to the very bottom to add a destination. All the destinations that you currently see on the left are what are available from the share menu. But in the middle, you can see that we can add additional destinations. And if you have compressor, this is a great way to apply some custom settings or all of the amazing settings that compressor has to offer. Since I wanna export multiple file types, I'll grab this bundle folder and just bring it here to the side. By clicking on the name field, I'll label this my common bundle and then start to populate destinations in it. I'll click on add a destination. But first of all, let's save a current frame for the thumbnail. With that save current frame selected, I'll choose PNG image. I'll then go back to add destination where I'll add the export file type, making sure that it's placed within the bundle underneath the current frame with the plus icon. We can actually rename this as well. So I'll call this master. And with the settings in the center, I'll make sure that the video codec is the same as the source. In this action, I'll make sure to only save only so it doesn't open in QuickTime. Last but not least, I'll add yet another destination, but to Facebook, and YouTube, we'll leave the compression at faster encode and then deal with the resolution if we want to change this in the export dialog box. So my common bundle is all created with these three settings. Let me now close this destination dialog box. What we wanna do is now choose the thumbnail that we'd like to export. So I'll take my playhead and actually move it over to this shot here. Let's head back to the file menu and from share, Here's my common bundle. In the export dialog box, first of all, you can see the current frame that we're publishing down here at the left. And if I use this arrow, I can move over to my next setting, which is master. Here are the settings that we set up with the action set to save only. And if you hover over the actual computer icon here at the bottom, we can actually see which devices this master file is good for, which is meant for playing back on a Mac just because of its file size. I'll click the right arrow again, and we can see the YouTube and Facebook settings. And for this resolution, I'll just set it to 1920 by 1080. Now with those three settings all set up, I'll choose next. I'll head back to my exports folder. We'll create a new folder, bundle exports. I'll choose create followed by save and the background task manager gets to work once again, this time sharing the three settings that we set up. It's already finished with the still. I'm now back on my desktop inside the my exports folder where I'll double click the bundle exports. Here we can see all three files create. We can also see the different sizes of those files. Let's review all of this. Final Cut allows us to export projects and assets from the share menu. We can select a project or multiple clips inside our browser, file share, we can choose from a variety of preset destinations. We can also add our own destinations here at the bottom of the list. Now last, to export several destinations, inside the add destination settings, you can create a bundle folder containing all of the settings that you'd like to use for your export.